how do we know what is actually real? How do we know these seats or this stage around me is real? What if everything that we think we know about reality is actually false? These questions might be a little strange, but I'm not the first person to think in this way. If we take it back about 2,500 years to the time of the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, we can see that the nature of reality was a very popular topic. One of the most famous moments of questioning the nature of reality was written in Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Plato basically wrote a fictional setting in a cave to try to get the people of his time to open their minds to start asking questions of whether or not this reality is real. He describes a setting in a cave with prisoners chained to a wall, looking at shadows on a wall in front of them, being cast from a fire behind them. All these prisoners perceive are these shadows on the wall. That is their only reality. Even the noises coming from the people holding the objects they believe actually are coming from the shadows. So when one of the prisoners escapes from the cave and goes out into the real world of nature, of sunlight, which is our world, he is able to see that this cave world of shadows, of false objects, is really just fake. He realizes that he has been looking at a false reality his entire life. So Plato basically creates this fictional setting in a cave to try to get the people of his time to start questioning reality, start asking the questions of whether or not they're seeing a true reality. Throughout history, we can see that the nature of reality has been questioned from Plato to more recent theories and um, theoretical physics. What I'm referring to here is the holographic principle. The holographic principle is basically an idea that makes us question whether or not everything around us, you, me, the person sitting next to you, is just a hologram. It makes us wonder whether or not we are seeing the most true reality. The, the idea basically revolves around new discoveries about black holes. A black hole is defined as a region of space that has such a strong gravitational pull that it creates a hole-like structure in space and sending a black hole. So, and the center of the black hole is called the singularity, and that's where the black hole basically gets all of its gravitational pull. And there's a certain point in the black hole that once you pass this point, you are stuck in the black hole forever, which is called the event horizon. So when an object is basically tossed into a black hole, it passes the event horizon and is stuck in the black hole forever, and then destroyed at the singularity, or the center of the black hole, along with all of the information that the object contains. So the key word to this whole theory, pretty much, in that last sentence, was information. Information can be kind of described as the coding of what makes us who or what we are. So we could say that every object has some sort of code that describes it. And the laws of thermodynamics say that information can never be destroyed, only transferred. So like it's, it's kind of like if I were to delete an app from my phone, the app's never really destroyed, it's just transferred to like the iCloud. But in the case of black holes, where does the information go if it is just being transferred? Because like I said earlier, the, if the object is stuck in the black hole forever and destroyed at the center. Well, for many years, people kept questioning this. And the physicist Stephen Hawking actually said that the information is destroyed in a black hole, and black holes are able to break the laws of thermodynamics. But this just doesn't seem right. So, Leonard Susskind, along with many other physicists, got into this huge debate with Stephen Hawking called the Black Hole War. And basically, they were trying to prove that information is not destroyed in the black hole and that the information of an object is preserved somewhere on the black hole. They were actually able to eventually sway the great Stephen Hawking into believing that he was wrong. They were able to theorize that the information of an object is preserved on the surface area or the event horizon of a black hole. So, to kind of break this down a little bit, it's like if I were to throw this remote into a black hole, it would spiral down a black hole past the event horizon, but as it passes the event horizon, the 2D code that makes up what this object is, so the 2D code that describes the coloring of it, the shape of it, would be transferred in two-dimensional form on the surface area of the black hole. So the idea is that we can then take that 2D code and project it back into its original 3D form, which is exactly what a hologram does. So what if our universe has some sort of distant boundary way off in space that we can't see, that has 2D code spread all over it, and that code is then being projected as a hologram, which 
would make our universe a hologram. It would make you, me, the seats you are sitting in, the person next to you, just a hologram. What if everything around us is actually false, and somehow this reality is not the most real reality? What is even more astonishing than this amazing theory is that Plato, 2,500 years ago, before we even really knew what a black hole was or any deep sense of math or space, was able to predict this theory in a way. He was able to have some sort of gut feeling that made him believe that reality, that we can never see reality, that, that this human nature is not able to see past a false reality. Each, the hologram principle and Plato's cave allegory basically run parallel in the sense they both question whether or not we are seeing a true reality. Now, you have to ask yourself one of the strangest questions you'll ever ask yourself. Am I a hologram?